Good afternoon, good morning, and good night. I'm your host, Grayson Auth, and this is... Cosmic Complexity. Yes, and that's also Trenton Messer What's with up? us tonight. Welcome back. Or this morning, or whenever you're listening to this podcast. Yeah. We uh, took a little break recording, which you guys did not feel at all, but we uh, took a little Mother's Day break, so it's been a while since I've seen you, Trent. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, like... I saw you earlier. I'm like, that's sweet. Yeah. I feel like I don't even know you anymore. I don't even know you. I, I feel like we're, we're like... Rocky What's with this? the uh recordings. What is this podcast again? What what are we what are we talking about? <laughs> I forgot. So the past couple of episodes of Cosmic Complexity, we've talked mainly about Christianity, what we believe, and the main reason for that is because we both hadn't had any guests on the show, and so we just kind of talked about what we know, but we do look to having guests on the show. And I've spent the past couple of weeks trying my best to get a hold of a flat earther or someone who believes in Scientology, because of the verse that I'm really interested in and want to hear about, and have I bore no fruit, Trent. I'm sorry, I failed you. <laughs> I've looked everywhere for it. So today, what we're going to do instead is we're going to go to the Scientology YouTube channel, and we're going to watch their introduction video, and also their uh, they have like a 10 minute long video that explains I think what Scientology is. Because I don't know anything about Scientology. Yeah. I don't either. I, I've heard it uh, talked about before, but I, I don't know much about it. So, so I think it's, to learn about it. it's going to be an interesting sit down for sure. And I also want to clarify right off the bat, though me and Trent don't believe in Scientology, we're not condoning Scientology. We're also not discouraging it or hating on it or judging it. We're simply here to hear it out and hear more of an explanation from the source itself on what it is, because I think a lot of people, at least on the surface to me, it appears kind of get misconceptions about it and what it is. And uh, I, I know that famously, I think it's Tom Cruise is a Scientology believer. Hmm. So I, I, I really, it. I think he is Tom. Don't fact check me on that. But <laughs> I know a celebrity is famously believes in this. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm really genuinely curious to see what it foretells. So I think we could just jump in. Just jump right on in it. I mean, do you have anything else? I mean, I don't think so. Yeah. So I'm ready to go. Um, I, when I, well, I guess we could play the video. Um, let me do this. Hold on now. There we go. Oh, all right. Here we go. You've probably heard of Scientology. Why is it a religion? What's it clear? What's it mean? Well, whatever you have heard, if you haven't heard it from us, I can assure you, we are not what you expect. So take a look, and then decide for yourself. So that didn't really tell us much, but yeah. that, that, did, that did introduce us yeah. into a somewhat expectation of what this is. I mean, yeah. so there are multiple churches seen here. Um, yeah. No, I, it, it seems it's like a pretty big company. Because, I mean, religion. No, I, I don't know much about Scientology, but I, I mean, just wonder if I first hear it, you know, it seems like more of a an ideal, but it, from that video, it seemed like it was it was a, a global sort of organization. They had looked like they had some charity stuff they were doing. Yeah, like a, a not just a practice, but more on the religion, right? Kind of aspect of it. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm really curious to see. I, we saw there was like a 10 minute long video. I'm trying to find it uh, of that same man who was introducing everything. Here we go. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's Might give a little more information. Yeah. Th that that seemed more like a high video. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll try. We'll try this one out. Hello, and welcome. You've probably heard of Scientology. In fact, 
Every six seconds, someone searches the question, what is Scientology? There's a lot of talk about us, and we get it. People are curious. Well, we want to answer your questions. Because frankly, whatever you have heard, if you haven't heard it from us, I can assure you, we are not what you expect. So, while I could tell you Scientology is new, our approach is new, our answers are new, and that Scientology is not just something you believe in, it's something you do, well, I'm sure you would much rather just see for yourself. And that's what the Scientology Network is all about. I'm sorry. To show you... That was awkward. Sorry for interrupting you. He didn't introduce himself. What was David Miscavige? So it's so it's a practicing something you believe in practice. Yeah, that's what we're getting so right, far. Right, right. Well, yeah, which is interesting. I mean, yeah, I mean, just on the outset, it seems like more of a philosophical ideal, but uh, it, it definitely uh, seems like it's more of a like you said a practice. Yeah, it's interesting. Curious I also it. find it pretty interesting that he um, he he mentions pretty quickly that the most most of what you hear is not from them themselves right which is true like all i've heard about scientology has been from other people some rumors or... which is why i've like looked for an actual person who actively believes in this because i would love to hear it from someone who actually practices but i hope this i hope this is more i'm excited well i'm sure you would much rather just see for yourself yes. and that's what the scientology yeah. network is all about to show you inside Scientology. Who we are, what Scientology is, and what Scientology can do. Okay. Scientology is a dynamic and expanding religion, and we're going to be showing you all of it. Perfect. For instance, I'm standing in our spiritual headquarters, and we'll take you through all of it. Likewise, we'll take you into our churches, spanning 167 countries on six continents. We'll also take you behind the scenes and into our church management, publications and dissemination facilities, humanitarian outreach centers and programs, and even into our new millennium Scientology archives. But even still, there remains the question of why so many people are Scientologists and why they are so passionate about it. In answer to that question, you'll meet Scientologists from all walks of life. Firefighters to factory workers, yeah. doctors to CEOs, and yes, some of the most well-known artists and celebrities in the world. You'll see Scientology in practice. Our values and beliefs, our technology of auditing, our e-meter, everything. Ooh. Exciting. Finally, we'll answer the question as to how Scientology came to be the only major religion founded in the 20th century. And that's the story of our founder, L. Ron Hubbard, a true-to-life genius and an honest-to-God modern-day Renaissance man. But with all that, let's be clear. We're not here to preach to you, to convince you, or to convert you. No. We simply want to show you. Wow. Because so they were after all. So they've already been under the cosmic complexity training. Yeah, right, right. I didn't even they, have to they already, they already know the drill. I mean, that's the whole point of this podcast, is just to hear what they have to say. So that's perfect. I, I wish we could hear it. Maybe and you know what? The door is open as well, I would like to say. If you're watching this and you believe in Scientology. Like, whether you're someone who is actively teaching it, or uh, I, I don't know the terms they use, but right. um, I would love to hear it from you. And we don't have to be on site. We can do remote recording. So please, oh, yeah. like, email us. There's an email in the description. Actually, I haven't told you this. Uh, on all of our descriptions now, oh. there is an email that you can contact us, and you can pitch to us what you believe and why you believe it. And we will get back with you and hopefully we can set up a time to talk to you. But that is in place, that's cool. in place on all of the episodes. So just scroll down and you can email me and that is my business email. So uh, also respect that, you know, but don't just spam it all the time. 
But if you want to ask any questions or share your feelings on the podcast, we're going to get to the point where, and we'll talk more about it later, but if you are a Scientology or a flat earther or an atheist or whatever, email us because we would love to hear it and hopefully we can set That's that right. up start recording some stuff but anyways let's let's continue well, the first principle of scientology is that it's only true if it is true for you so take a look and then decide for yourself i'm david miscavige and this is the scientology network A lot of this where they put their hands over their eyes and look inside the window and they're like what is this once you actually start talking to somebody about it they're like just okay what is Scientology oh well what brought you in here I'm just curious so what this is is called an e-meter it's the cutting edge of spiritual technology What it represents for Scientologists all over the world always has and always will is spiritual freedom. Here at Golden Era Productions, we produce all of the films of Scientology. And we also have one of the largest studios in North America. What we produce is not just a book, it's not just a lecture, it's all the knowledge that's inside. When we consulted with the British Museum, the National Archives, we wanted to find out how do the best archivists in the world do things. The biggest barrier was actually finding technology that would last. So we had to push technology and invent technology in order to do that. Scientology Media Productions is a very unique... All right, I'll, I'll pause. We'll take a break. There's a lot to uh, digest there. Yeah. That right was... off the bat. So they have very high-end archive mm -hmm. abilities, which is really cool. I think that's I think that's a good thing to push, like making sure we're archiving our information and history is very important. So I think that's dope. Yeah. And then they had, well, it's like a spiritual reading. Yeah, it, they call it an e-meter. E-meter? Yeah. That's interesting. That is interesting. So I look from what they could show us at least, and I'm hopefully we can get more out of this because it seems like we're just getting another hype reel. Right. But also I think it's good because it's introducing at least on the surface, it's showing their like it's it's like the same as any religion's hype reel, where it mm -hmm. just shows the surface of it and the exciting parts of it. Right. And then later on they dig or they dig deeper into the different practices and stuff like that. So I think yeah. that's really interesting to see but it looked like they put their hand on it and it had a reading to it so uh -huh. and they said uh it's what you believe spiritually is is true to you i also found that very interesting it's yeah I, it seems like a very spiritual freedom which i find interesting uh so some of their buildings kind of seem more modern um sort of architect texture and then others were more of the sort of old school kind of uh roman catholic sort of look you know like the cathedral sort of look i, I thought that was kind of interesting that there's a, a variety of, of different architecture types within their in their churches i guess mm -hmm. yeah. which they also seem to be very like they're very expansive like they're uh -huh. they're not in one country they're like i mean he was saying they're right. what, what do you say 160 something yeah which is pretty crazy yeah, which they could have a lot to do with it, which is the different architecture styles. Uh huh. So. Okay. Well, let's let's start with this one. This is one that caught our eyes right yeah. off the bat. It says, "Scientology beliefs and practices: the Scientology cross." That so that that is a. I mean, when you look at a cross, you think Christianity, right? So I'm really curious to see which. You know, it is, it isn't owned or by the Christians. It's not. It was a practice of like killing somebody right, or yeah. punishing them, but it is most famously used by Christians. Right. 
of all sorts. And I think Mormons use the cross too, don't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of like Christian and sort of um, Christian uh, type religions mm. will will use the cross. Of course, except for except for Judaism, they they may have similar morals, but uh, obviously they they don't uh, use the cross. But mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like Mormons, Catholics, um, probably Jehovah's Witness. Yeah. So I'm curious to see. What we'll get into. This is a three minute long video, so let's let's, let's hunker down. When one looks out across the confusion that is life, one can see it is compartmented into eight divisions. These are motives or motivations. They are the urges to survive. We call them the eight dynamics. The Scientology cross is an eight pointed cross that represents the eight dynamics. The first dynamic can be called the self dynamic. The first dynamic is the urge to survive as oneself, one's unique identity. This includes one's name, physical appearance, possessions, status, position, the thing specific to you. The second dynamic can be called the sex dynamic. It is the urge toward survival through the sexual act and through the family unit. Next is the third dynamic, the group dynamic. This consists of such things as your school, work, or any clubs or associations you may belong to. Next is the fourth dynamic, the mankind dynamic. Whereas the third dynamic represents groups, the fourth dynamic represents all of mankind as a whole. The fifth dynamic is comprised of life forms. This is the urge to survive with the help of all life forms, such as plants and animals. Anything directly and intimately motivated by life is part of the fifth dynamic. The sixth dynamic is the physical universe. This is the universe of matter, energy, space, and time. From these, we coin the term MEST. This can be called the universe dynamic. The seventh dynamic embraces spirituality. Anything spiritual, with or without identity, would come under the heading of the seventh dynamic. The eighth dynamic is the urge toward existence as infinity. The eighth dynamic embodies the concept of a supreme being or creator. It embraces the allness of all. It is represented here by the symbol for infinity. The eight points of the cross represent the dynamics of life through which each of us strives to survive. Your ability to achieve harmony with respect to each of these dynamics is symbolized by the Scientology cross. Okay. Interesting. So now, now we're now we're cooking a little bit. Now yeah. we're actually getting some practice and a little bit of understanding. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. Yeah. So I, I'm kind of curious um, to learn, like, be, because the well, the 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 reason why I had eight points is to represent the eight dynamics of life. But I wonder if there's any other. Um, reason why they like chose to use a cross specifically, you know, like instead of just a eight pointed star, and stuff right? Like that. Yeah, I an eight pointed star. That's that's what I was thinking yeah. too. I, I also think, and I and I don't. It's hard to because I don't want to assume. Right. But I would say like a cross is 
like notable like you recognize right, yeah. it it has a extent. religious uh sort of uh meaning or context yeah and and it it does have like a difference to it like it's not just like the one line the other through it right yeah. but it it has like a star input into it i i think the different dynamics are very interesting i think a lot of it was mainly about existing as a human and and like how you're living and how you practice that living mm -hmm. and a lot of it seemed to be drive focused too like i think that at least on the surface it seems like it's one of the more important aspects of this practice and religion yeah is what you believe what you, how you treat yourself how you treat your family or your partner or your drive for sex and your like a lot of it was like work related group related practice related uh -huh. the the last two are the most interesting to me because they have one where they're talking about spiritual existence and yeah that was the one where the imagery was really interesting to me of the you know the man standing and then there was something floating behind him and it said whether you're actively spiritual or not actively spiritual so they're right. acknowledging that there's a spiritual connection even when you're not there and then the last one which was the infinity symbol yeah which kind was of representing also, a supreme creator yeah they, a supreme being that is infinitely existing which you know that kind of goes into similar to agnostic which not they're not the same but right both acknowledge a entity that is supreme Right. So I find that very interesting. But this one is we're gonna go into another one. Unless you have anything else you want to say. Right. No, yeah. I, I I'm I'm curious to see kind of what the spiritual side of, of Scientology looks like. Yeah, hopefully we can find more on that. But for now we're gonna go into the next one, which is Scientology belief and practices, the Dianetics symbol. So a lot of these are symbols, but they seem to have pieces of the practices in them. Yeah. So I, I guess we can keep cooking with this. Music is interesting. I like it. Yeah. This is the Dianetics symbol. The term Dianetics is taken from the Greek words dia, meaning through, and nous, meaning soul. Dianetics is further defined as what the soul is doing to the body. It uses the Greek letter delta as its basic form. The four sections represent the four dynamics, or urges to survive described in Dianetics. Dynamic one is the self dynamic. It is the thrust to survive as an individual to obtain pleasure as an individual, and to avoid pain. It covers the general field of food, clothing, and shelter, personal ambition, and general individual purpose. Dynamic two is the sexual dynamic. It is the urge of the individual to survive through procreation. It includes the sexual act itself, as well as the rearing of children, and the securing for children of better survival conditions and abilities in the future. Dynamic three is the group dynamic. This is the urge to survive through a group of individuals or as a group. A group can be a club, a military company, a community, or one's country. Dynamic four is the mankind dynamic. It is the urge of the individual towards survival of all mankind and embraces the entire species. The traditional colors of the Dianetic symbol are green and yellow. Green, representing growth, and yellow, representing life. Okay. Interesting. So that one, it 
it borrowed a lot of the same, um, I guess, like, different sections as the cross did. Yeah. At least the first, like, four of right. the cross, which I find pretty interesting. I'm sure there's a reason for that. For sure. And it seemed like it seemed it, it connected it more to the, the spiritual side of it, like the soul. Yeah. Which I think I think what they're moving towards is like a separation between spirit and soul. Like the soul is more earthly, like people. Mm -hmm. You know, drive for yourself, drive for the people you love. Sexual drive, grouping drive, much like the first four of the cross. I see you pulled something up on your phone though. What do you, what do you got? Yeah. Um. Yeah. You know, the, well, my my initial thought was it seems kind of similar to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, which is just kind of a a way of explaining. Um, our our um, quote unquote human needs, um, and so some people agree with this and some people don't, but basically it it, it puts like our you know fit like physical needs as the most important, mm -hmm. and then goes up to uh, the our our I guess least important um need or or rather um kind of if, if we're the, the, well, yeah, this is kind of our least important need, but still, according to this, a need of self-actualization, which is the desire to become um, the most that one can be. And then love and belonging is also in there. Um, friendship, intimacy, family. Esteem. So, yes, pretty similar. Yeah, it, it kind of seemed to ha have a similar um, idea behind the, the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is, is, is interesting. Uh -huh. I mean, it seems to me, too, that, like, they... And I don't want to say borrow, but you know they do yeah. seem to have a lot of similar contributions to other religions and beliefs, which could could be arguable for most religions is that there's a lot of borrowed or similar ideas, but mm -hmm. there's always like a little bit of things that change throughout them that makes them different and unique. Right. And that seems to be quite a practice. But so far, at least from what I can gather, it seems to be a very human oriented religion as in like what you are doing what your drive is yeah. and and trying to reach a higher level of that drive that is beneficial for you and also those around you would be my guess yeah but i i'm it's very interesting so i think we're going to go into our third symbol here this is the scientology symbol so i'm guessing this one is probably going to be important so let's just keep on rolling through these. But I, I've this is interesting to me. I hope yeah, it's definitely. interesting to you, Trent. No, yeah, I, I, I've been wanting to learn about this for for a while now. I'm glad that we're sitting down and and doing it. Mm -hmm. This is the Scientology symbol. There are two triangles over which the S is imposed. The S simply stands for Scientology. Sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. The term Scientology is taken from the Latin word skio, which means knowing in the fullest meaning of the word, and the Greek word logos, meaning study of. Simply put, Scientology means knowing how to know. The lower triangle is known as the ARC triangle. The first corner of the triangle is called affinity. Affinity, in this case, is used here to mean love, liking, or any other emotional attitude. Affinity is a variable quality. It is the degree of liking or disliking. The second corner of the triangle is reality. Reality could be defined as the solid objects, the real things of life, the things that we agree are real. The third corner of the triangle is communication. Communication is the interchange of ideas or particles between two points. 
Affinity, reality, and communication are interdependent one upon the other. When one drops, the other two drop also. Reversely, when one rises, the other two rise as well. In understanding the composition of human relations, communication is more important than the other two corners of the triangle. It might be said that the triangle begins with communication, which brings into existence affinity and reality. Altogether. So to pause, pause on that first aspect, the affinity, reality, and communication. So the yep. idea is that they all coincide with each other. Right. And when one is pushed up, the other is also pushed up, or vice versa. When it's pulled down, the others are pulled down. Right. I, that's interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I feel like there's, I mean, there's some, there's some truth to that. Just in that, you know, if you, if you, if you're a good communicator, then um, your uh, affinity for a person will be increased. And if you have poor communication with a, a person, then um, you, you might have a not as a good of a relationship yeah. with that person. So, yeah. I also like how they um, they they point out specifically the bad aspect of that too. And intentionally, they're showing like when you're kind of a shitty person, it affects others, and it also brings down your affinity, reality, and communication in a sense. Right. And, and so the idea of pushing yourself to be better because it not only affects you, but it affects others around you and it also doesn't just affect one aspect of what you're doing and practicing but all of them mm. you know if you're treating someone around you poorly that's also going to affect this person poorly and your communication with them poorly and the reality of that poorly and so right it's not a bad practice to see and it's very interesting to see how they're explaining it so for sure i'm curious to see what the other triangle is because i would think that it was they're both the same meaning but it seems like there's separation between those two so right Let's keep hearing it. ARC oh. brings about. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Understanding. The ARC triangle is the keystone of living associations and the common denominator to all of life's activities. The upper triangle is the KRC triangle. The points of the KRC triangle are K for knowledge, R for responsibility, and C for control. It is difficult to be responsible for something or control something unless you have knowledge of it. It is folly to try to control something or even know something without responsibility. It is hard to fully know something or be responsible for something over which you have no control. The KRC triangle acts like the ARC triangle. When one corner is increased, the other two also rise. By increasing each corner of the KRC triangle bit by bit, ignoring the losses and making the achievements firm, an individual discovers his power and command of life. The KRC triangle interacts best when used with high ARC. Thus, the triangles interlock. Okay, so that 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 makes sense on how they work together. Right. So it's yeah. more it's more about your what was it curiosity, responsibility, or and the CRA was communication, communication responsibility, reality, and, oh reality, and, knowledge, and no no no, no. CR <laughs> communication reality, and uh, what was the other one? I thought it was knowledge. No, knowledge was the K something. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. This is KRC. Oh, oh, excuse me. So it's knowledge, 
I, I forgot what this used is. Used with high ARC, right, making the back. achievements firm. Oh. All right, well, whatever anyway. it was. <laughs> yeah. But, but it, it seemed like it kind of carried with the same theme as the past ones of just kind of um, uh, like a unity and uh, sort of a, a self um, actualization sort, mm -hmm. of, sort of ideals. So. And that's been pretty relevant. And and been shown case throughout all of these is the progression of oneself. Right, it seems to be very, like, and, and it also has community, community, and you know, growing with others around you. And I think they've also been very intentional with like partners. Like, it's not just Absolutely. yourself growing yeah. oneself, but it's more. Yeah, it's very community oriented. I also found it very interesting. The you know, you can only grow so much if you hold yourself back. You know, you have to be able to take the wins and not the losses. Mm. So a lot of it seems to be mentality and Absolutely, yeah. you know, some of it, I think we've seen, at least in these past couple of explanations, we've seen more of the, you know, soul aspect of in their own, using their own terms, like the soul aspect of it, mm -hmm. where what we are living just day by day and not so much the spiritual aspect of it. And I want to know, I want to know more about that. Yeah, me so I'm too. Trying to, I'm trying to find looking here Maybe we do we have the, the e-meter we have one about the e-meter so we can check that out yeah introduction to auditing is there the oh, title yeah. of this video interesting let's let's check this out let's see what this is this is we this caught a rise right in the beginning so yeah <laughs> One of the fundamental principles of Scientology is that a person can improve his condition only if he is allowed to discover his own truths about himself. In Scientology, this is accomplished through auditing. Auditing is the process of asking specifically worded questions designed to help you contact the past harmful experiences buried in your subconscious, reactive mind and release you from their negative influence. This is done with an auditor, meaning one who listens. An auditor does not offer solutions or advice. They are trained to listen and to assist you to return to past areas that are unknowingly affecting your life. The auditor helps you pinpoint these areas with the aid of an e-meter. Through auditing, one is able to look at their own existence and discover the past experiences that are preventing them from achieving their full potential. Do you recall a day when you were younger and you woke to find bright dew sparkling on the grass, the leaves, to find the golden sun bright upon a happy world? Do you recall how beautiful and fine it once was? What if life could be that fine again? Scientology auditing offers the means by which one can explore their past and find answers, their own answers. In Scientology, auditing is a precise activity, thoroughly codified with exact procedures as detailed in scores of books and hundreds of writings. Scientology auditors are extensively trained in both theory and practice over a period of years. The purpose of auditing is to bring an individual from a condition of spiritual blindness to the joy of spiritual enlightenment and freedom, the long-sought goal of religion since its earliest beginnings. Okay, so now now we we've gotten into more of the yeah the spiritual, spiritual side of it. aspect of it. So it seems like to me like a very like almost spiritual therapy yeah. in a sense. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, it, it definitely does seem like well, therapy. Talked about kind of getting rid of the negative energy by you know uh, going into those past traumas or whatever, mm -hmm. revisiting um, them. Right. Yeah. Kind of. Coping with them, I guess, or not coping, but like um, coming to terms, yeah, is a better mm -hmm. better word. Um, but I, I'm still kind of curious to see 
what exactly the e meter is and like how it how it works you know yeah from the looks of it 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 had like a clock and it had a reader whenever they moved it you know it said rise set fall test and, and it went back and forth right and they, and they had their hands on it and there's some like some knobs that do different things and it it looks like maybe there's like a heart rate or blood reading yeah, of some, some sort, sort of some sort of data on there that they're taking. So, you know, and I think now we can kind of take a a shift and more into instead of just listening and hearing it out, I think that mm-hmm. we could sit here and watch YouTube videos the whole time and and just hear more and more about it. But right. I, I think now we can kind of shift more into what we think about it. Um, I think it, it's fair to point out you know me and trying both are christians and so yeah. this is very interesting to hear it and we're not sitting here looking at this with like this massive judgment but looking at it on perspective outside of what we believe you know trent what do you think of this not taking into account your religion but more so you as a self yeah um i mean it, it definitely seems appealing in the sense that um you know that, that it seems like there's a lot of self growth and mm-hmm. um sort of stuff you can do um so it definitely seems appealing in that sense of growing as a person and uh finding community yeah and, and a lot of it was lifestyle too right yeah it, it definitely seems appealing in the lifestyle um yeah so i mean from a unbiased standpoint i think yeah. i mean it, it definitely does seem appealing in yeah the the, the lifestyle and the yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem to be a bad thing either. I, I find it interesting, like, all you hear about Scientology is from Reddit or Twitter or mm-hmm. YouTube or TikTok or, you know, social media and, and how they twist it and, and shift it. And I will say the same thing happens to most religions. Like, it's no matter the religion, you know, the, those who practice it believe in it and they believe it is true. Whether you're a Christian, whether you're an atheist, whether you're a Scientologist, flat earther, you believe what you're doing and what you're practicing is real. And what you're doing is real. And these people and these people who practice this, they seem to be believing it is real. And Mm -hmm. and I'm curious, part of me wonders like what what it's like and what that lifestyle is like, especially, you know, in this one in particular, this last video we watched, they talked a lot about remember the times when you were a kid and everything was bright and it was colorful and you know i think that idea is there's deeper than that it's Mm -hmm. more so like the mindset of not having the weight of your traumas and what you've been through in your life life in the world yeah and and more going back to that mindset of freedom yeah of childhood and and that childlike bliss yeah yeah which i i don't think that's a like that is a good thing to look for, I guess. Is mm-hmm. is the the freedom? Yeah, of and uh, nobody stress. wants to have a stressful life. Um, but yeah, which I, I think a lot of these videos, at least from what I can gather on the YouTube channel, are about like people talking about their experiences and how they feel a lot better and a lot more free. Yeah. So I I wonder why it's so hated, like socially is my curiosity and mm-hmm. i wish i wish i knew that like i wonder if there were experiences in it which can be said for every religion is you know some churches some places no matter what the religion is like, yeah absolutely and it happens where something bad happens and then yeah the whole thing is ruined in a sense but i mean i i personally i i i wouldn't practice it mm-hmm. mainly because I, I just, it's not my shtick, I guess, but I could see why this would be practiced. Like I could see how there's churches in all these different countries and states, and yeah, it makes sense to me that they're they're full. But I also wonder why we don't hear more about it yeah. from other people. Like I don't, For sure. I don't think I've ever talked to anyone who believes in Scientology. Yeah, and it, it could also have to do a lot to do with where we live. You know, we... well, they have one in Austin. Do they really? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. It's interesting. Um, yeah, I, I, um, I, I had a, I had a thought. I just, I forgot what I was gonna say, but uh, it, it was more of a question. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, 
I, I wonder if, because it, it, it talked a lot about how, well, some of the introduction videos talked a lot about how um, it's all about kind of finding what's true to you. Yeah. Um, so more of that kind of self. Um, One self. And... Right, yeah. Um, so I, I wonder like, how far that extends. I wonder if kind of they view Scientology as kind of the, the, the base um, of what you grow off of. And I wonder if there are people who, like, I, I wonder how diverse of beliefs there are within like, a, just a single Scientologist church, you mm. know? Um, so I, I wonder if you have people who lean more atheist or lean more, you know, like, like whatever. Like, I wonder how diverse the beliefs are. I would say it's probably not as lenient towards atheism, mainly because they talked about the infinite being with the cross, the eighth one being like a right omniscient. Because atheists believe like there is no creator whatsoever. Like, yeah, we we just non-existent. Uh, We're just here. Right. Which this is more. We are here, and we were created by something for sure. But they don't believe it is like the Christian God. They believe it is just an omniscient creation happened by and it. So they don't deny the fact that something had to have created this planet and this being. Uh-huh. Um, and they, they also don't deny like spiritual energies, which I, I find interesting because you, you see a lot of religions outside of the Christian God. You know, there's not many who actually like actively believe in spiritual interaction. And I guess I'm trying to look for the word. It's like, growing from oneself spiritually mm -hmm. like you have yourself and then you have your spirit and what happens there and i i i've always find it interesting to see other different religions talking about spiritual yeah for sure practices i guess is the word i'm looking for i think it's really interesting yeah I, i'm curious to learn more about the uh the introduction video mentioned like the founder yeah i'm curious to learn more about kind of how he founded it and what what the history what he founded is. it on yeah and I and they in, in the last video they also talked about like some, um some some books and some writings that they have. Mm -hmm. I wonder kind of how those came about and what the significance of those are. Yeah. Which they use a lot of. They've been using Greek words as well. Yeah. Which makes me wonder if this comes from like a, and more ancient belief than we expect. Like this seems like a more modern thing to me. Mm -hmm. But maybe there's more to it. And and they yeah. did talk about like their archives and, and their ability to archive things. Yes. Yeah. So I, I think that there is probably a history to it. But I'm not seeing any historic explanations. And maybe they, they do it of like literature and stuff. Uh -huh. We can get some books and we could read in on it. We can kind of see more of the history of it. Because that that's one thing for me about religions is I, I want to know the history of it. Like I yeah. want to know how it got to this point. And I think there's Sometimes yeah. it's hard to find that, mm. but I, I think we could find, we can, there's some like little documentaries of people who are active. Yeah. I'd be curious to kind of see what, what uh, they believe. Kind of hear a testimony or something. Yeah. Let's see. This one's a filmmaker. Got Sue, a cool hat. Sue, yeah, he's got a really cool hat. Just wait until you see his hat. The inspiration for Unbranded really came from the main mastermind behind the whole journey was Ben Masters. He took a ride, he was going to school at Texas A&M, and he rode the Continental Divide Trail with some of his buddies. And being in college, they didn't have a lot of money, so they had some horses, um, whether they're quarter horses or just whatever they had. And they found out about these wild horses that they could get for little to nothing to adopt them. So they adopted some wild Mustangs, trained them and found out through that ride that these horses outperformed their other, you know, thoroughbreds or whatever. Ben called me up and wanted to do this trip and it sounded incredible. I did that first interview with Ben and realized like this guy really knows what he's talking about. He's really smart when it comes to uh, just the open spaces, wild horses, and just why the purpose of why he wanted to do this trip. There's this whole issue in the West with ranchers and advocates and public lands and wildlife. And then you have wildlife experts that are just claiming the, the damage that the, the overpopulation of horses are doing to the landscape affects the landscape and other wildlife. Well, I knew we were capturing beautiful landscapes across the whole American West, seeing all the you know, iconic places like Yellowstone Park or Glacier Park or Grand Canyon, 
It's also just those areas in between that people just don't know about. I'd want viewers to take away from watching this is just an appreciation of what we have in America in its public lands and it's what we have, you know, for everybody to enjoy. And, you know, it's not to say that you have to get a wild horse and ride from Mexico to Canada, but all the parks that are accessible to anybody and it's, um, yeah, to not take that for granted because not a lot of people have that. This seems to be, he's talking about like a documentary that he had. Yeah, and th this could just be kind of a, an example of uh, people who, like in all walks of life, who are um, active Scientologists. Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah. I, and it also, he, he reflected that kind of ideology of respecting the world around you right. and those around you and, you know, building off of that. And I mean, he seems happy that uh, we'll say that, like, it doesn't seem like he's down or, you know, he seemed thrilled and he seems to have the opportunity to shoot a documentary about this person. So I think that's really interesting. Yeah. And sure. I also find it very interesting to see like, like there are active movies being produced and, and TV shows and documentaries. And I, I, I never really see this and I wonder how much of it like we do see it, we don't even acknowledge it mm -hmm. or realize that it's there but it's been like actively around us like this doesn't this is not a new thing it's also not huge like the American Scientology only has 88,000 subscribers mm. which is not money like that's not much yeah for something that I've heard about so much that that is a lower number than you yeah, would expect sure. but also like they're not they don't seem to be financially in any point of of trouble no, yeah but yeah i mean they, they talk about how they had this whole like movie production mm -hmm. crew and one of the biggest studios yeah to shoot all of these different visual effects and stuff yeah and i i i wish there was a way to contact them and like and and, and talk to them mm -hmm. but i i just haven't found any anything I, I haven't found any way of you know even just getting like a meeting with them it's all mostly you know just their productions and their stuff like that and there's no yeah there's no way of reaching out and and, and i i guess i can understand that though i'm sure there's a lot of people who kind of spam them or, or mock them for or, sure yeah you know it would make sense that they wouldn't have like an easily accessible like way of contacting them but also, I wish that there was an easier way to. Like, <laughs> yeah. But you can only do so much, I guess. They have apps and stuff, too. We're looking at their website. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it, it was cool to, cool to look into it. I'm definitely going to check out that YouTube channel. Or, yeah, a, a bit more and mm -hmm. um, kind of do go a little bit more in depth into yeah. what they believe. Which, I mean, again, you know, as we kind of wrap up and get to our last five minutes here on the show i i want to clarify again like we're not encouraging this or telling anybody to believe in this we're simply sitting down and kind of looking into it and opening our mindset to the different ideas out there because i i think it's very healthy and interesting and whether you believe in christianity or atheism or whatever it, it's interesting to hear other people's beliefs and, and their practices definitely and I do think, like, one thing to note out of it is people tend to hate each other because of what they believe. And that's, like, the first thing. It's like, oh, you're Catholic. Oh, you're a Mormon. Oh, you're this. You're that. You're, And in the end, I think when you look at all of these different beliefs and practices, they all have a very similar thing in common. And that's how we treat each other, how we shoot ourselves, and, and striving to be better at that. And I do think that's not an unhealthy or unhelpful thing to have. Like, I do think most religions are very actively like, don't be a piece of shit. <laughs> you know, don't, don't hate each other. Don't be awful to each other. And, uh, I think that is kind of often forgotten. You know, it's even as Christians, I think we, we tend to forget that we should just be nice to each other and not be shitty to each other. And, uh, I can't con I can't hate on something that is like just hey quit being shitty <laughs> you know it, right. it, it's definitely different and it's definitely not 
like something I would follow, but it is also really interesting to see, and I would love to talk to someone who actually practices and yeah, believes that'd be this. very interesting. Because, you know, the only things I've heard about their spiritual side have been from, like, like word of mouth from other people, and I'm, I'm like, I don't understand that. Like, I think yeah, the... Yeah, that's not always completely trustworthy. Yeah, because I, I think a rumor spread. that I've heard is, like, they believe that they can hit a certain level of spiritual spiritual power but mm -hmm. they can fly okay huh. uh i think is one of them um but they didn't really they didn't really have anything on their youtube channel or website that was about like the afterlife what happens when you die yeah. or and i feel like that's often like the first thing you hear when you look into a new religion yeah for or sure belief is like death is feared the most but um the spiritual therapy aspect of it was very interesting yeah. to me, though. Like and it, this definitely seems more kind of um, focusing on this life and not so much on the next life, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. um, which maybe they believe in, you know, like the resetting of life. Like when you die, you just come back. Oh, like a, a reincarnation yeah. sort of deal? Yeah. Which, maybe. you know, even if there's an omniscient being in your belief, some do believe that there is like, you know, there's like the egg theory, which is that um, when you die, there's only two beings. There's you and, and the creator. Mm -hmm. And so when you die, you go back up to that creator and then he sends you back. But he sends you back at a different time and a different person. Yeah. And so everyone around you, like me and you, are the same person. But we were born at different times. Oh, yeah. And we die at different times. And we just got sent back. And so, in that sense, infinitely. That is interesting. It, it I, I've, is never, interesting. I've never heard that before. Yeah. I, I've taken a couple of classes um, at my college, uh, or well, a class, where um, it was a humanities class. We learned a lot about kind of different world religions, but mm -hmm. um, it, it was interesting when we heard kind of his beliefs. And he, he, he was, I guess, agnostic, um, mm -hmm. but he said that he believed in, in like a uh, sort of reincarnation that. You know, um, I don't know if he believed in kind of you do good and then you, um, you get you get a good life in the in yeah. your next life and vice versa. But he said that he did believe that, like, yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense. You know, you die and then you get a new life, sort More of thing. Like faith by works aspect, which I wouldn't say that Scientology was works. Or no, it didn't yeah. seem to be. Like it, it didn't seem. Well, to I mean, blame. like th there was nothing really. They were like. Um, like, or like, it seemed like there's no way that they really answer to, like, ultimately. I mean, yeah. at least from what we that brief little introduction. No, that and didn't then there seem is no like really moral code. It just seemed like kind of live your best life and you know mm -hmm. do good to like like be good to others sort of thing. They also had like people who'd been practicing for years that were like there is a hierarchy to the what were they called the the auditors auditors yeah yeah like, yeah. They, I mean, they definitely there's definitely somewhat of a hierarchy. Mm -hmm. But it seems it didn't seem to be like their main drive. Or no, anything. yeah, like it was just there's a level to it where those who have been practicing more experience, more experience, and yeah. they can be more helpful. Like it wasn't, it it was like bringing each other up. I think a lot of it was very helping others and yourself in a sense, and a lot of it seemed to be very forward about the drive aspect of it. Yeah, I mean, I think that is a very interesting idea, and we definitely will return to Scientology at some point. For sure. Hopefully next time, but I think it was interesting for both of us to kind of sit down and look into it, yeah. because neither of us have really had it. Yeah, so. it's a good introduction into it. And uh, again, like, if you're listening to this and you believe in Scientology, like, you are more than welcome onto the show. We would love to hear what you believe and why you believe it. Like we genuinely yeah. would. Like I would. I would love to hear from an experienced person who does this and and why they do this. I think it'd be an interesting practice and experience. And for sure, um, if you all enjoyed this video or, or podcast episode, thank you for listening and, and thank you for being here. And um, we are actively uploading every Monday, so. Again, like I mentioned earlier in the podcast, we have an email that you can email us, contact us, and tell us what you believe and why you believe it, whether it's flat earthing or it's like a personal belief or aliens or, you know, tell us your stories. I would love to hear stories. And even if you don't want to be on the show, email us your stories and we'll start to read them and start to hear yeah. them. And 
I mean, maybe we can just really do an fun. episode of just going over different questions or ideas that people have. So be cool. with that, a uh, new episode every Monday. Thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you guys next time.